It's just incredible to see the actual thing. It's like living history. This set of old photographs collected dust and stains for decades. You can see the like outline of the second Christmas tree. The images, part of an album with 116 photos in all. In one series, the lighting of a Christmas tree. In others, a group of women laughing, entertained by an accordion player. These pictures show a group in lounge chairs, relaxing, enjoying their leisurely time. People captured in black and white from a dark chapter in modern history. It's wild to be in the presence of something that was so close to a Nazi. The artifact in question, discovered by an American soldier in 1945 Frankfurt, Germany, brought back to the United States and donated to historians in 2007. Dr. Rebecca Erbelding saw them first. She's a historian with the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. She immediately recognized a face in one of the photos. This photo here was the first time that we noticed that Joseph Mengele is in the image, the, the infamous Nazi doctor. Then realizing these were never before seen images. This is the summer of 1944. The um, Hungarian uh, deportations have just happened. So this is kind of when Auschwitz becomes Auschwitz. The photo album belonged to Karl Hoker, a high ranking SS officer at Auschwitz, documenting life at what amounted to be a resort camp for both men and women, less than 20 miles from the infamous death camp. This is the leadership of the camp. So you have the original commandant, Rudolf Hurst, um, who built Auschwitz, who first tested the gas chambers and experimented with that. The people in the pictures grabbed her attention, but it's what they were doing that left her stunned. You don't see any photos of kind of stereotypical Auschwitz photos as we would think of them. What you see instead are parties. You see people having fun. You see people taking tours. You see the SS life of Auschwitz, the life of the officers. And when you do see images of, of them lounging and celebrating a holiday, what emotions does that stir for you? I mean, for me, it stirs a lot of discomfort. It stirs curiosity. I think there's an expectation that people will be visibly evil. This album really gives us a lot of insight into the minds of these perpetrators. And I think it asks a lot of questions. How can you have a party while you're also staffing a killing center? How the photos were discovered and what they revealed about the perpetrators of the Holocaust caught the attention of an award-winning playwright who thought this story was made for the stage. As soon as I mentioned the word concentration camp, they are suddenly quiet. The photos are the, the mystery, and the play tries to delve into the mystery and perhaps tell us something about our lives today. Moises Kaufman and co-playwright Amanda Gronick are behind the play Here There Are Blueberries, named for the inscription on a series of photos in the album. There's such joy and excitement about the fact that they have found this delicious fruit. If you look at that moment, you wouldn't make much of it. But the fact that they're doing that next to the largest killing center in the history of the world recontextualizes what it means. Ah, great. For weeks, they've been rehearsing. But before the show's opening night, the cast went back to where the story first began with those original photographs. We were there as they saw them in person for the first time at the Holocaust Memorial Museum's archives. You can see, oh. I mean, how small they actually yeah. are. Elizabeth Stallman, who plays Dr. Erbelding, is one of the actors portraying a real-life figure in the show, set to grace the Shakespeare Theatre Company's Harmon Hall in Washington, D.C. next month. The facts are extraordinarily important to get right and to make sure that we learn the facts so that we can properly supplement the story. A poignant moment about the past that grapples with questions of complicity. What I think we all need to wrestle with is that these people are doing monstrous things but they were not born monsters. They made choices. The scars of those choices taking on a second act. The telling of history is dependent on that which history leaves behind. Without evidence, you have no story. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.